We're back to it being hot as balls. Hi guys, I'm Monica and welcome back to my channel, Mooney Reads, where I talk about books and things. And today I have such an exciting video because we all know that I fucking hate series. And yet these are all series that I think are not only worth your time, but that are worth binging. Because here's the thing, sometimes some series are good, but you don't wanna binge them, like you don't wanna sit there and, I don't know, read, I don't know what series I'm gonna say, but you know, sometimes you just don't have the time, you don't have the energy to get through a bunch of books and like, uh, Brandon Sanderson uh, writes like a thousand page books and then he writes six of them and it's like, I can't binge that, who has the time for that? Well, the series I have here, my friend, are completely bingeable. So let's get started. The first series that I have is Percy Jackson and the Olympians. Now, one of the reasons that this is such a good bingeable series is that it's a middle grade series. It's written in first person, which I know like throws some people off, but I think Percy is such a like a fun character to follow and like his adventures are so fun. And I think that as somebody that practices Hellenistic paganism, I think Rick Riordan really did his homework when it comes to the Greek gods, which was really important to me. Of course, he adds his own little things in there and stuff like that. So just know that of course this is not historically or classically accurate, but it's still a really fun series to just binge. I really like the first one. The first one is all about this little boy. He's a 12 year old boy named Percy who doesn't know his dad and has basically been labeled as a troublemaker his whole life. He has a really hard time going to school because he has really bad dyslexia. And what he discovers is that all of these things is because he's the son of one of the big three Greek gods, which is Poseidon. And basically, somebody has stolen Zeus's thunder, and for some reason, Percy gets blamed for it. But, so he has to go on an adventure to find the lightning. <laughs> And not only that, but there is an overarching evil and like a final battle. And it's just a fun, good time. You can get through these books so quickly and they're just a lot of fun. And I really, really recommend that you get to them, especially because now we have all decided that she who must not be named is no longer like the owner of booktube and books in in, and middle grade books in general. Let's get into Percy Jackson who, by the way, Rick Riordan is a really nice guy. The next series that I have is one that I'm actually in the middle of right now. And if it wasn't for like outstanding circumstances, I would definitely have binged this and finished it already, but outstanding circumstances. And that is the Broken Earth Trilogy by N.K. Jemisin. Now this is a kind of dystopian, kind of sci-fi, kind of fantasy story that we're throwing in where um, there are these people that can control er the earth and the earth movements and and like anything to do with geography. <laughs> Is it geography? I don't know. But anyway, they can move tectonic plates, they can freeze people, stuff like that. I know it sounds a little X-Men-y, but there is so much more to this. The fifth season is basically a season that the world has gone through over and over and over where the world basically, basically gets destroyed every fifth season. And some seasons last five months and some last five decades. And apparently when this book begins, there is a fifth season that is said to last four centuries. So basically, nobody is supposed to be able to survive this particular season. That being said, we are following a woman whose baby just got murdered by her husband because he finds out that she, as well as the baby, are one of those people that can control the earth. And these people are considered extremely dangerous. And I don't think I'm doing justice to this book by this summary, but just know that N.K. Jemisin's writing is so enthralling and you just kind of want to go through it and just like find out all of the mysteries and what is going on and what is happening. And again, there is this overarching big deal, you know, here and I can't wait to see how it turns out. As far as bingeable series go, I cannot 
not include middle grade because first of all I love middle grade series and second of all I think they're the perfect bingeable series because you can get through them super fast but the next one I have it's not completed yet but you can still read the first two books and the third book is coming out in October so I'm super pumped about that and that is um is it the Cassidy Blake yeah Cassidy Blake um series by Victoria Schwab now this is such a like gentle beautiful horror story <laughs> basically this is the story about cassidy blake Cla cassidy almost died one day and ever since then she has the rare ability to see ghosts but not only that her parents are actually ghost hunters and they are offered this deal to participate in this tv show where they hunt ghosts except cassidy knows that they don't really they aren't really capable of hunting ghosts because they can't see them. And in the first book, we find out that there are more people like Cassidy and what their true purpose is and why maybe her best friend, the ghost, might not necessarily be her actual friend. And let me tell you, for being a middle grade series, this is actually pretty damn scary. So I 100% recommend, recommend that you pick this up. But just know that if you're one of those people that is easily spooked, this is actually kind of scary. So just be warned. Next up, we have the series that I just finished. And I was waiting until I finished that last book so that I could make this video because I wanted to recommend the series anyway, but then when I finished that last book, I was like, yep, definitely gonna go into that video. And that is The, Mem the Memoirs of Lady Trent by Marie Brennan. Now this is a six book, I believe, five or six book series, but they're really short. You can get through them super fast and they are so bingeable. They were like... Like, I read the whole series, I read it in a month. In a, well, in a month, and then the last book I read it here, now in August. So, it's like, so bingeable, you can get through them so fast, they're fascinating. The whole idea is that you have this woman in the Victorian era that is fascinated by dragons. And not mythical dragons, the real dragons that actually exist in her world. So you have this woman who wants to investigate dragons and yet she's a woman in the Victorian era. She isn't basically even allowed to go to school, so how can she investigate dragons? Well, her hard-headedness finds a way. And what I really like about this series is that it's told from her perspective as an older woman. So basically, I imagine her as like the grandmother in Downtown Abbey, where she just doesn't care anymore. She doesn't care what people say about her or used to say about her. And honestly, what I really like about this story is that it reminds us that you don't need to be 25 or 30 to go on adventures. You can still go on adventures when you're 40 and 50 and 60 and you can make amazing dragon discoveries or do whatever you want to do. Um, there is an overarching like political thing in this series which honestly I didn't even pay a lot of attention to because I just wasn't interested in that part but the part that I was interested in I was like yes and also oh my god there's a romance in here and I rarely enjoy romances but I felt it <laughs> I was like please get together and love each other it's really good it's really well done and I like that this series is an adult series because it doesn't follow that not like other girls trope where you know Lady Trent would be like all oh, those women that want to just stay home with their children I cannot fathom the idea She's not like that. She's like, there are women that want to do this, but I want to do this. So she is completely, I don't know, she's one of my favorite female characters. Like, remember that video I did, which I will link up here, where it was describe yourself in seven uh, bookish characters? If I had to do a video of describe yourself in seven bookish characters that you wish you were, this Lady Trent would probably be one of them because I really wish I had the balls. Not the balls, the ovaries that Lady Trent has. And it's really just an interesting book. And if you're kind of, I, I like it because it's like it's such a nice cross between 
non-fiction and fiction and it's just such a fun fun series i 100 percent please binge this series because i think that is the best way to get the like the whole idea of this series just binging it and enjoying every book like i would like finish one book and pick up the other one finish one book and pick up the other one i read them all in audio so that was great but yeah 100 percent recommend I'm, I'm gonna stop gushing about this series now <laughs> okay so i say that i'm mostly known for reading um sci-fi and i know what you're thinking it's like monica you haven't even touched on any sci-fi series don't worry baby i got you we're not gonna spend a long time on the first one because do I recommend this in every single video that I make? Yes, and that is the Wayfair series now by Becky Chambers. Currently, there are three books out in this series, and what I like about this series is that, first of all, it's all in the same world, but it's not, like, continuous. Like, you don't... Like, you don't follow the same characters. You follow characters that are related to other characters, but you don't follow, like, an overarching story between these characters. So you can kind of read them as companion novels. Not kind of. You can read them as companion novels. Now, the number one thing that I like about this is that if this is feel-good sci-fi. Like, honestly, after you're done with these books, you just feel good. And for somebody that's been feeling really down lately, <laughs> I really need it to feel good. And these books just do that for me. This is a this is all based in a world where humans had to leave Earth and they live in different planets or they live in different like stations and just recently they were allowed to be part of the big like government <laughs> that rules the galaxy and that alone was really interesting that that part of it this also deals with ai like the, the issues that we're going to have with ai communication between aliens i really like how um becky chambers imagines aliens because i always feel like in 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 these kinds of series like the, the Star Wars-y kind of aliens and humans come together. Um, aliens basically behave like humans, but here they don't, and I think that that's really interesting and a lot of fun. And I think you should binge it just because they're so feel-good that I feel sometimes sci-fi can be a little bit <laughs> intense and the contrary of feel-good. It can actually be really hard and difficult to swallow and really like draining on your emotions whereas i feel this series is the complete opposite you finish it and you feel fulfilled and happy and like oh my god i want to read that again which i have <laughs> all right next up another series that you have heard me talk about but that i haven't really recommended as a binge worthy series and that is the shadow children um, sequence by Margaret Peterson Haydix. Now, if you saw my bookshelf tour, which I will link up above, you saw that this has seven books, but these books are so short. And before you think that this is a middle grade series, I'm gonna say that this is actually an adult series disguised as a middle grade. And one thing that this series has in common with a lot of the other series that I am recommending is that they don't have a romantic subplot. There are no love triangles here. There is nothing. The only thing that, you know, I think is tropey about this series is the whole idea of children bringing down the government. But the cool thing is, it's not kids that bring down the government in the end. You see them grow throughout the books, and by the end, they are adults, or at least merge like almost adults and adults do appear and help and parents are actually a thing in this series so i think that that's really cool you change povs you learn a lot about the world um i haven't explained what it's about but basically this in this world you are not allowed to have more than two children because there are basically not enough resources to maintain them but of course what you learn eventually is that of course there's enough resources they're just being hoarded and this is a way of population control and people control so it's really hard because the main character luke is a really nice boy out in a farm he has 
like his whole life is really idyllic and beautiful and then because the government is trying to control the food sources they basically take away the farmlands and build houses and there he meets another third child and i'm gonna leave it there for you seriously i just think this is the most uh, like nobody talks about this series and it's so good it talks about how governments use resources to control people food deserts um uh the idea of blaming people for the faults of big corporations which is something that i talked about in my amazon um privilege video and i just think that this is such a cool bingeable series i read all of these books like all seven of them i read them in less than a week because of course i could get to through to through two or three of these a day so <laughs> like, they're so and they're so good i love how good they are i love how raw they are uh just be warned that there is a lot of murder of children in these so that's just my little trigger warning but please please somebody pick this up so that i can talk to them about it because i have no one to talk to about this freaking series and i really want to talk to someone about them and this is new this is a series i have never 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 talked about in my channel and that is because i totally forgot that i had read it and also because i'm still bitter <laughs> you're gonna see <laughs> i'm still bitter about the ending of this series but it was because they killed off my favorite character that is not a spoiler because you don't know what my favorite character is but it is the milkweed triptych by ian tregillis or tregillis i'm sorry i don't know how you say that name but basically my cat's in the litter box let's wait until she gets out and if you're wondering why the frick i have to wait for my cats to get out of the litter box oh look she didn't even make a noise it's because the litter boxes are right next to my bookshelves so basically they make so much noise that it's like impossible not to listen to them but let's get back to the milkweed uh triptych now um i'm holding up uh the coldest war which is actually the last book and the reason i'm holding this up is because it went on sale for like 68 cents and i know that i'm on a no buy but i don't think 68 cents count okay <laughs> so i'm waiting to get the other the other books because i know they have sales all the time so I'm, I'm i'm waiting for them and or i'll ask for them for my birthday or something but basically what is this about this is so hard to explain there are magicians like real magicians but in order for them to do magic they have to use blood to contact these alien-like creatures and the alien-like creatures are like basically using our blood to infiltrate our planet more and more until they take over this is why it's not good for magicians to use magic then there are people that have superpowers and there is a character that can tell the future and there is a character that um, it's super strong and it's basically again i'm sorry i always say x-men when i think of superpowers but i grew up on x-men and all of this in the backdrop of world war ii and nazis so basically this um detective gets this special mission to use the magicians because one of his best friends is a magician to try to counter the use of Nazis having superpowered human beings to fight wars for them. I mean, <laughs> it's so, so good. This was one of my favorite series and I completely forgot about it until I was like thinking about this video and I was like, I have to put the milk with triptych in here because it's so damn good. And it's so bingeable and the characters i think the characters are all flawed and um there's one in particular that is very dislikable but i'm not going to say anything about it i just want you to experience the amazingness that is the milkweed the milkweed triptych now um i think the um, 
the books are bittersweet unnecessary evil and then no it's bittersweet bitter bitter seeds the coldest war and unnecessary evil i don't know the order i forgot the order but anyway pick this shit up it's so so good and it's blurb by george R. R. martin if you care actually ian trugillis ended up going to work with george R. R. martin in other projects so if you like game of thrones this does have that kind of change of pov game of thrones style it, it, it's so good and the and the time traveling because you have to time travel and they decide that like there there is infinite amounts of um worlds where different decisions were made and they have to go through one another and you know those books where like they try really hard to insert like foreshadowing i have never seen foreshadowing as well done as this book does it like well this series does it like there is a scene in the first book and then in the last book you understand that scene in the first book it makes no sense and you're like what's going on maybe it's because of this or that and then when you read the last book you're like oh my god what the actual fuck so yeah definitely read the milkweed triptych by ian tregillis next up another series you've heard me talk about over and over again and i'm sorry that i sound repetitive but these are the books that i like so these are the books that you get and that is the search for one plus series by tony de Terlitzi. the reason why i think this series is so bingeable is because it's kind of addicting and also there is a mystery in this series that you just want to solve you want to solve the mystery of whether eva 9 is on earth what happened to earth and where the fuck is she and why are there aliens everywhere when she was supposed to be on earth and also the other thing i think this makes this series so bingeable is the beautiful illustrations inside i honestly would just like read just to get to another illustration over and over it's such a good series it's so sweet so wonderful and also it's just kind of a heartwarming series be prepared for it to appear in another video because i'm making another video about video about not about videos about books to read when you're not feeling your best and this is definitely going to appear on there because this series just is just like a hug from the inside and i like that it doesn't fall even though it, there is no chosen one there is no love triangles nothing like that it's just straight up beautiful storytelling with some of the most amazing world building that i have seen in any series that i have ever read like the the I have never seen anything like this and if you're a fan of Star Wars I think that this is the closest that you can actually get to Star Wars while reading a book um, in case you don't know this is the story of a little girl called Eva 9 she is in a pod underground being raised by a robot called mother who is a wonderful wonderful character and um, she has always dreamed of going to the surface but mother doesn't think that she's ready for that until one day circumstances that I will not spoil for you force her to go to the surface and she finds out that while she was expecting to find a bunch of humans and to be on earth she doesn't know where she is and this planet is completely alien so how did she get there why is she there and where are all the humans at it's a beautiful story it kind of it's it's I don't want to spoil it so i'm not gonna say anything <laughs> but it's definitely a really nice mix between fantasy and sci-fi that i really haven't seen done as well in any other book ever so this is a bingeable series it's only got three books out and honestly again even though these looks like chunkers because there's little writing per page and also because of the illustrations you can get through this possibly in a day if you are a fast reader if you're me you can get through it in two days though <laughs> and the last sci-fi series that i have to recommend for you to binge is the murderbot diaries by martha wells 
What can I say about Murderbot Diaries? The Murderbot Diaries are basically about a security unit that is used when um, humans go explore and they basically need a enhanced human slash android slash robot thing to come keep them safe and that's just basically what they're meant for except that our particularly lovely psych unit has become sentient and self-aware and uh, it loves to watch soap operas and that is how it learns about humans and human life and I think that that is such a perfect thing. <laughs> I also love the fact first of all these are all novellas except the last one that is a full life novel but honestly it's really short and you can still read it as a novella there's another one coming out but um if you want something fast fun easy i love murderbot's um dialogue i love its sense of humor <laughs> and i love its in like insistence that it doesn't care whether you care about them or not but um it definitely cares like it so cares it's and it's adorable how much it cares about both um its human clients about its new android friends and i like how it learns not how to be a human but how to be itself in this world where it's not looked at as a sentient being and I think that that's really really cool it's a fast-paced action-packed series which is what makes it so bingeable again I binged this in like two weeks I was done with the whole thing and then I had to wait for the new book to come out so I'm eagerly waiting but if you want to catch up now is your time to catch up it's such a fun series and like I said, it's, it, and then it's another good feel-good sci-fi series because, you know, it's, 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 it's fun, it's funny, and it's not, it doesn't take itself too seriously, I think. Anyway. <laughs> also, another cool thing, there is polyamorous relationships in this world and stuff like that. I didn't mention that about the Wayfarer series because I think I've mentioned it over and over that there is um, LGBTQIA plus representation. And in the Murderbot Diaries, we also get that and we also get polyamorous relationships, which I think is really cool. The last two, again, are series that are favorites of mine so you've heard about them before the first one is the magicians by Lev Grossman I was looking at my edition of the magician king and it says Harry Potter for grown-ups now we all know we don't like Harry Potter anymore <laughs> I'm joking you can like Harry Potter if you like Harry Potter I personally just don't but um yeah this is everything that I wanted Harry Potter to be and then it wasn't it's got drugs sex alcohol addiction cheating, unlikable characters, death, murder, uh, the pursuit of knowledge above all, the idea that you can be talented at something but not talented enough and what that does to you emotionally and how that destroys you and it's so good you guys. Now but I will warn you this is like dark. This is not like a happy read like the other, this is not gonna leave you feeling good. This is gonna leave you feeling like wow. People are shit. <laughs> so just be warned about that with this one because it's not like a happy-go-lucky series. And the same thing goes for my other uh, recommendation, which is, guys, please read The Monstermologist so that I can like finally complete my life or something, my life goal to get people to read this book. This book is about a secret society of scientists that study monsters except monsters in this world are not really monsters what they are is just biological normal creatures that have evolved in ways where we see them as legendary but they're actually not monsters like for example let me give you an example um there is the the idea maybe a vampire it's not that there is really a vampire out there it's just basically that there is this disease that makes you allergic to the sun and you need vitamin D and you need more vitamin d because you're allergic to the sun so you crave blood so it just doesn't 
talk about monsters as if they were real. This is also a little bit of historical fiction, by the way. And well, there is a society of people that study these animals that are all in danger of extinction because we have hunted them down thinking that they were mythical monsters or mythological monsters and stuff like that. And the main character in this is the most petulant, annoying person ever and I love him so much. He is so like not a not a good person but i love reading about flawed characters so i love reading about him and basically every book goes through a different monster and the cool thing is by the end of it we get this idea of maybe there are magical things going on but the narrator refuses to accept them because he considers himself a scientific man so there you go. Please read this book so that I can talk to someone about them. And again, just like in the murder bot, again, like the murder bot one, the monstermologist, uh, most of these don't have a romantic relationship aspect to them. So if you're not into romance, because I'm not into romance, then this is really cool for you. And the ones that do have romances are romances that to me sound believable and not, you know, love at first sight or whatever <laughs> and no love triangles. So that's it. Those are the 10 series that I think that are worth binging right now. And well, I just, I love all of these series. And for somebody that doesn't read series, these series really spark joy. I really need to start like stop like I need to stop saying that <laughs> because I'm gonna get flagged by YouTube like you can't say that only Marie Kondo can say that sorry Marie Kondo but anyway um, I go I hope you guys enjoyed this video I was so excited to talk about the milkweed the milkweed <laughs> triptych because I never talk about it I might dedicate a video on its own once I get all of the books, I want to reread them. They're so, so freaking good. Um, except the end. I got rid of my original copies of the books, number one, because they were in Spanish. And I was just so angry at the end. But it's not because it's a bad ending. It's because they they kill my favorite character. <laughs> so I was like, ah! You know, so mad at it. Uh, but honestly, all of these books are amazing. Um, and I think that you can get like some hours and hours and hours of enjoyment out of these cool series and i think that there's a little bit for everyone here there's some fantasy there's some horror there's some sci-fi all of that stuff so i know there's a lot of series out there that i haven't sunk my teeth into but it's because i really don't like series i don't like starting series because then i get really like I, does anybody get this way where they get like anxious if there's like like they haven't finished a series that they have open like right now i haven't finished the fifth season and it's like really weighing on me because i i, I like to just finish this is why i like to read standalones <laughs> but anyway i hope you enjoyed this video i hope that uh you pick any of these up and if you do leave me a comment down below leave me your favorite series to binge down below and maybe you'll get me to do it props if it's a sci-fi series that is not too long and that doesn't have more than three books <laughs> so anyway without further ado i bid you adieu with the reminder that i post videos every mondays wednesdays and fridays come hell or high water and that I appreciate you very, very, very much. And I will see you in another galaxy far, far away. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.